Flappy Bird was originally created in three days, but we are going to do it in just five minutes. Let's go. Let's start a new 2D project using the Universal Render Pipeline. Next, grab the sprite sheet for the art, link is down below, and let's bring that into a sprites folder. Set the sprite mode to multiple, the filter mode to point, and compression to none. Next, slice these up in the sprite editor by just dragging around the objects that we want. We want the background, the two green pipes, these three bird sprites, the ground, the title, the game over, and the play button. Make sure you adjust your slicing so that they're pixel perfect. Now let's bring in the background and adjust the aspect ratio from free aspect to nine by 16. And if you don't have that option, you can click on it right here and type it in yourself. And now let's adjust the camera projection size so it fits our background perfectly. You can drag these three sprites into the scene view to create an animation. Let's call it flap. And let's copy the second frame and paste it in the end and copy the first frame and paste it at the end. This will make a nice smooth animation. You can drag these out to slow the animation down. Set the bird's order and layer to one and the background to zero. Now let's bring in the ground and set its order to two. We want the bird in front of the background but behind the ground. Set the draw mode on the ground to tiled and add a box collider 2D with auto tiling turned on so the collider adjusts in size automatically. Now let's add a rigid body 2D and a capsule collider 2D with a horizontal direction. To be able to test nice and quick, let's go to edit, project settings, editor, and tick on enter play mode options. Do your research before doing this with any big project you're working on, but here it's fine. Now our bird is colliding with the ground. Let's let him fly by creating a fly behavior script and attaching it to the bird. We'll need a velocity variable in the inspector and a private rigid body. Let's grab the rigid body in start. Let's install the input system from the package manager and add that namespace at the top so that we can use that to look for our mouse click in the update function. If we've clicked, we're gonna add some upwards velocity. There we go. To get the bird rotating, let's add a rotation speed variable, and in fixed update, we can control the rotation based on the velocity in the y-axis times our speed. Beautiful. Now let's drag in both pipes and parent them to an empty object, and space them apart like so. Give them both a box collider 2D, create a move pipe script for these, and inside that we're going to move them left every single frame. Make sure you add a speed variable. Cool, let's make it a prefab and delete this. Now create an empty pipe spawner game object and give it a script with the same name. We'll want serialized variables called max time, height range, and pipe, and with a private called timer. We're going to start by spawning a pipe and that will work by spawning them at the position of the pipe spawner plus or minus a random distance that is your height range. Then we'll spawn in the pipe at that location and set it to destroy itself after 10 seconds. We'll want them to keep spawning, so if our timer exceeds our max time, spawn a pipe, reset the timer, and don't forget to increment the timer at the end. Assign your pipe prefab, and we have moving pipes. Now let's add a game over screen. Create a canvas, set it to scale with screen size, and add three images. The title, the game over text, and the play button. Check set native size and adjust the scale till you're happy. Let's deactivate that and create a game manager empty object and attach a game manager script to it. Make it a singleton so you can call it from anywhere and grab a serialized reference to the canvas. Our game over function will turn on the canvas and freeze time. Make sure you set the time back to normal at the start of the game. While we're here, let's create a restart game function by loading the current scene. Don't forget your scene management namespace. And don't forget to assign your canvas. To restart the game, let's add a button component to our play button. Set the transition to none and assign the game manager script to the on click event and call the restart game function. To call game over, go back to our fly behavior and call it whenever our player collides with anything. Now we can die and we can restart. Let's make the ground move. Add a loop ground script to it and we'll need a serialized speed and width variable. Grab your sprite renderer component. Let's set up a start size vector two and grab the size from the sprite renderer and each frame we're going to adjust the size until it has reached its max width, and then we'll reset it. There we go. And lastly, let's set up a scoring system. Create a new canvas with four text TextMesh Pro objects. You'll need to import TextMesh Pro. Let's grab the actual Flappy Bird font, link is in the description, and to create a new font, you can go to Window, TextMesh Pro, Font Asset Creator. Drag in your font and generate the atlas. Now drag that font into your font assets. Our first object will say score and the other will be best. Throw a zero in the other two. 
and position them in whatever way you like on the screen, keeping in mind they'll always be visible during the gameplay. On your score canvas, create a score script. Let's make it a singleton and grab a reference to our two TextMess Pro objects, the ones we entered zeros for, and set up a private int called score. At the start, let's update our current score text and our high score text. We're using player prefs to save our high score, which works really well for simple cases like this, but it is not meant for large amounts of data, so keep that in mind. We only want to update our high score if the score is higher than the current best score. Now we also want to increase our score each time we fly through a pipe. So create a public update score method and we'll increment our score and update both scores in the UI. Let's assign those in the inspector. And finally, go back to your pipe prefab and add a box collider 2D in the middle. Be sure to tick trigger or this game will end real fast. And add one more script to the pipe called pipe increase score which is going to call our update score function whenever our player triggers the collider. Update the player tag to player, and there you go. Like if you liked, dislike if you didn't. Bye.